Have you ever tried emailing such a huge image that it felt like FedEx in the hard drive would be faster? Well, luckily, most of the time it's enough to compress the image so that it takes much less space, and then we can send this smaller image without any problems. Before we go to the compression of images, let's take a look on how the one-dimensional case works. Now let's look at a simple example. Even though the signal is continuous, we can only observe it at some discrete times. We now write down this discrete observation as a vector. And we want to use this vector to calculate the discrete wavelet decomposition. On the left, we first average over the signal by adding together two consecutive observations. On the right, we calculate the difference be differences between two consecutive observations, finding the finest detail. We then average over again over the average signal and calculate the rougher details and we then keep going on until we have averaged over the whole signal. Now these details that we have on the right hand side are called the wavelet coefficients. We can now move to 2D images. Here is Lena. Picture of Lena is often used in image analysis since it has many attractive qualities like details, flat regions, shading, texture. And of course, Lena is also attractive, being the centerfold girl from Playboy magazine. Well, picture of Lena has been used for more than 45 years, so for the sake of variety, I thought that we could use another picture. Here is Fabio. As you can notice, the picture of Fabio also have details, shading, texture, and of course, flat regions. To decompose a 2D image, we calculate separately the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal details. We also calculate the approximation image. We can then continue by calculating the rougher details from the approximation image and repeating this until we reach a desired level. The great advance of the wavelet decomposition is that many of the wavelet coefficients describing these details can be replaced by zero without the image quality suffering too much. This method is called thresholding. On the right we have a picture where more than 90% of the wavelet coefficients have been replaced by zero and we can notice that only the finest details have been lost. Thresholding works also well when we want to denoise an image or a signal. Now what does any of this have to do with fractals? Let's take a look at a normal signal and zoom in and keep doing this. And we notice that actually the amount of detail seems to be getting smaller and smaller. So if we calculate the really fine wavelet coefficients, they will be quite small. On the other hand, if we look at a fractal, uh, we notice that no matter how much we zoom in, there always seems to be more and more details. And actually, that is the idea of a fractal. So the amount of detail is same in every level. So where might we encounter fractals in real life? Assume that there is two ways of transporting goods, either by ship or by a truck. Now, of course, the price of these two ways keep changing over time, and we would always like to use the cheaper option. The prices can, are often modeled using Brownian motion, and we do know that the null set of Brownian motion, in our case when one price becomes cheaper than the other, creates a fractal. Let's return to our simple signal example where we calculated the wavelet coefficients. We would now like to put these wavelet coefficients into a tree structure. We start in by putting the roughest amount of detail into the root node, then we always move down by one layer until we reach the finest detail level. Now, if we use normal thresholding, so where we just put a zero whenever we say that the wavelet coefficient is small enough, this means that some of the branches or nodes can be left hanging in the air. Because of the self-similarity of fractals, we propose an algorithm that enforces tree structure to the thresholding. This means that a node or a branch can only be chosen if it directly connects to the root node. If we think denoising a signal as a Bayesian inverse problem and use certain type Bessoff priors, then the solution given by the tree thresholding algorithm coincides with the maximum posterior estimator for this Bayesian inverse problem. The benefit of this is that we can then analyze Bayesian inverse problem with Bessoff priors and study what happens on the infinite dimensional limit. We can even calculate the fractal dimension of the continuous limit process. So let's see how our algorithm performs in practice. Now, here we have an original signal, but we assume that we can only observe a noisy version of it. Now we use our algorithm, which switches on or off full branches depending on how much information they carry. And as we can see, the denoised signal corresponds quite well to the original signal. 